Hey guys, in this video I'll be going over the radar for the MiG-21. So um, there are three different panels to control the radar. Um, there's the actual radar screen here, there's all these filters here, and then there's the power panel right here. Also, you're going to need to have some buttons bound to your stick to use the radar. You need this one here, target lock on, and these two here, TDC range pipper span plus and minus. For the TDC range buttons, plus and minus, you could have it bound to buttons, or if you have an axis you want to use, you can go to axis commands, and you can bind this one right here instead, TDC range, paper, span, control. All right, so to power the radar on, you come to the power panel, and you put this switch here to the middle to standby. Um, you, it takes around three to five minutes uh, to power on, so you put it to standby for around three to five minutes, and then after the time has passed, you can put it to on. And the radar should look like this when it turns on. So when it turns on, you can do a self-test if you want to. If you come up to the filter panel and you click this button here, then this cross is going to come up on the radar. You need to use um, those TDC buttons we bound earlier. And you need to move these little bars up to the cross. And then you need to hold down the lock button for a couple seconds. And when that happens, it's going to put this little thing on your screen, and it's going to move around a little bit. Then um, these lights are going to come on, and that's it. Once again, the self-test is not required. It's just there if you want it. Also, it's kind of hard to see, but there's this little thing you can grab down here and move it to the side. Um, that just kind of puts on a filter that changes the color a little bit. So as you use your radar, you might notice um, some stuff down here on the bottom. Um, these are not actually targets. These are basically just radar waves hitting the ground and coming back to you. So if you want to get those out of the way, you can come to this switch here and put it to the middle. This switch will filter out all the false returns. If um, the false returns are still there, even after you did that, um, you can basically put it up to low altitude mode, um, which will point the radar up a little bit to get rid of those false returns. Also, you may have noticed this switch here that says locked beam. So if you turn this switch on, it will just basically shoot out one uh, radar beam in front of you that will, uh, it's basically used for ranging for firing uh, ground weapons. But if you're going to use the radar to be locking on to other airplanes, you don't want to use that. You want to turn the locked beam off. Okay, so next there's all these filters on top. So this button right here is for the self-test, which I already went over. This button right here is the low speed filter. So if you're trying to find something on your radar that's flying really slow, like a helicopter, you can turn this filter on and it will make it easier to find something like that. By the way, if you ever need to turn off any of the filters, you click the reset button right here and it will turn off every filter. This right here is the IFF filter. I'll explain that later. This, right, this one right here on top is the weather filter. So if there are um, radar waves that are hitting the clouds and coming back to you, um, you can turn the weather filter on and it'll try to get rid of that. And then these three ones here are the jamming filters. So you can see there's passive, continuous, and inter intermittent. The continuous jamming filter is used if somebody has a jammer pod and they are actively jamming your radar. The passive jamming filter is used if somebody is letting out something like chaff bundles and the radar, your radar waves are reflecting off of that and it's coming back. Uh, that's what the passive filter is used for. And the intermittent filter will switch between the continuous and passive filters. All right, so I am in the air now. So first of all, with the radar, you need to keep in mind that it can only stay on for a limited amount of time. In standby mode, the radar can only be on for around 35 to 40 minutes. In on mode, the radar can only be on for around 20 to 25 minutes. So this is the radar screen right here. It's kind of hard to see stuff, but it's because it's pretty old. So the radar can see up to around 20 miles away. That's pretty much the max range. So left and right in the screen is obviously left and right in real life. However, up and down on the screen is not up and down in real life. Up and down on the screen um, is basically close and far away. So the bottom of the screen is right in front of you and the top of the screen is far away. Whenever something shows up on your screen, it's going to look like this. So if there is a little line with a line on top and bottom, that means um, what you're looking at is the same altitude as you. If there's a little line with just a line on top, it's above you. 
and if the little line just has a line on bottom it's below you so for me you can see there's a horizontal line and then there's a little line on top so that means he's above me right now you can also see there's these little lights here so if you see the interference light that means the, that your radar is being jammed if you see the HR light come on that means that your uh, missile seekers are uh, ready and if you see the launch light come on that means your plane is telling you to launch the missile so basically um, there's these two black bars on the radar in order to lock someone uh, you have to make sure the target is between the black bars unfortunately you can't move the radar cursor left and right so you have to just fly your plane left or right and then there's these two white bars right here you can move them up and down you use those controls I talked about earlier, the plus and minus TDC controls. You can also just use your mouse to move your throttle grip back and forward like this, and that will move the pipper, but you don't really want to be using your mouse. It's, uh, since this is something you're going to use a lot, it's better to bind it to your stick so it's easy to use. So uh, if you move it up, it's going to lock something farther out. And if you move it down, it's going to lock something closer to you. If you want to lock something, you click the lock button that we bound earlier. Um, or you can just click this button on the stick. If I do it right now, nothing's happening because nothing is in the pipper. So if you want to lock something, you basically fly your plane so that the target is within the bars. And you use your pipper to put the target between the yellow bars. And then you click the lock button. So I'm going to do it now. Keep in mind you have to hold the lock button, you cannot just click it. Once you get a lock, um, your radar screen will look like this. If you want to break a lock, you just click the reset button right here. So if I click it, it will break the lock. Right here is a good example of using the ground filter. So you can see right now it's pretty hard to pick this guy up, but when I turn the filter on, then it becomes easy. Alright, so now I'll be going over IFF. So the IFF system basically allows you to see if the person you're looking at on radar is a friendly or not. So first you need to power the IFF system on. So you flip up this switch here that says Type 81. Then you need to make sure this switch is turned on, this switch that says SRZO. There's also this switch here for setting the IFF code, but in DCS IFF is not really modeled realistically, so it doesn't really matter what code you put. So then whenever you see something on radar, all you have to do is click the IFF button right here, and if it is a um, friendly, it'll show up as two bars. And if it's unknown, it will show up as one bar. So let me find this guy on radar again. So here he is on the radar. Let me turn the filter on. So if I click the IFF button, you can see he showed up as two bars. So that means he is a friendly. Now keep in mind, if he shows up as one bar, that does not necessarily mean he's an enemy. It just means it's unknown. Lastly, I'll just go over fixed beam mode real quick. So if you put the radar into fixed beam mode, basically there will just be a line on the radar screen. And if the line uh, moves up, that means whatever the beam is looking at is far away. And if the line moves down, it means whatever the beam is looking at is up close. The fixed beam comes out of this bottom X on the display here. So if you put that bottom X on something and then look at the radar, um, that's what it will be based on. Also, when you're in fixed beam mode, if you take this switch here and flip it up to missile, um, then as this yellow line moves up and down, you'll notice this um, red and white line will move left and right. So this line will give you the range of your radar beam. So if I put my uh, X right there, uh, the bottom X is on that building over there. Um, and you can see the radar is ranging it, and you can see this red line. You want to look at this, if you look at these white scales, it's the bottom white scale, and it is in uh, kilometers, so you can see 1.6 kilometers or 1,600 meters away. That was the radar for the MiG-21. Thanks for checking out this video, and I'll see you later.